Welcome to a brief, succinct video on demand that introduces you to IPv6 technologies. We're all about being at the command line, as you know, in these video on demands. But here's one where we're going to leave the command line aside for a moment, and we're just going to go ahead and take an overview of key new IPv6 features. So let's just sit back and relax as we're introduced to some key components about the IPv6 protocol. We here at Netmaster Class feel that an excellent approach to learning IPv6 is to leverage the knowledge you already have in IPv4. We're going to see many similarities between the two protocols as we master the various features of IPv6. Many people say that, boy, you know, when is this going to take place and, and what's going to happen to IPv4? Well, first of all, for those of you that have spent many, many hours mastering the version 4 IP protocol, have no fear. IPv4 is going to remain in place for a very long time as the transition is made to IPv6. There are rich, backward support capabilities for IPv4 in IPv6, so the transition can be very gradual and non-disruptive, not only to our own private internetworks, but the great public internetwork that represents the internet. A lot of students ask, okay, well, when will it arrive? We've been hearing about it, seems like forever, but when is it really going to arrive? Well, obviously, companies that have many, many, many individuals, countries, that is, like Japan and Asia Pacific, they're already aggressively pushing for adoption because they're suffering with the address depletion issues much greater than anyone else is. As a matter of fact, Japanese governments are currently subsidizing private corporations to make the move to IPv6. In North America, we're starting to see pushes to make the move, and this includes the Department of Defense, which has now mandated that it will ensure all of its systems will be running IPv6 by 2008. So we're seeing more and more of a push for this new protocol as each month passes by. What are the issues with IPv4 that necessitate IPv6 technology? Well, by far, the most thought about one, the most spoken of one, is the fact that the addressing space of IPv4 is depleted. We created an IPv4 address space, and then we gave away almost all of it, and are currently facing depletion issues as a result. Another issue with IPv4 is the size of the non-default internet routing tables. As more and more nodes come online, the internet routing tables grow and grow, and this necessitates a lot of horsepower and a lot of overhead when it comes to manipulating and using these internet routing tables. The other issue with IPv4 that drives us crazy is that we've patched it to deal with address depletion, and one of the patches, as you know, is network address translation. And when we do network address translation, we're hiding the true source of traffic, and this is a problem. The internet working and the internet technology is supposed to be end-to-end, -end, and there are a lot of great advantages for having an end-to-end -end type infrastructure, and all these tricks we do because of address translation or address depletion issues, that's going to break this true end-to-end -end model that we so desperately want with TCP IP. But please, when it comes to IPv6, realize then that it's more than just about address space depletion. Certainly, one of the main features of IPv6 that we're excited about is a 128-bit address that is going to open up the amount of address space massively. Uh, one statistic I saw was like, 10 to the power of 28 times 5 for every person on the planet or something like that. So there is going to be an amazing number of addresses with a 128-bit address in use. And they're also going to do something smart this time and only deploy about 10% of the overall space. 
so 90% of the space will be waiting in the wings when needed. We love the fact that with this larger address space, we can eliminate network address translation and we can get inter-networking back to an end-to-end -end type of infrastructure. Routers will behave and will be able to route more efficiently. We'll look at why that is in other video on demands. IPv6 is not going to rely on broadcasts. In IPv6, broadcasts are eliminated and instead we have unicast, multicast, and anycast type technologies. No more need for a broadcast. One of the great things we love about IPv6 is the transition rich features that have been built in so that we can smoothly and seamlessly transition to this new technology from IPv4 environments. Mobile IP support, which was an add-on to IPv4, is built right in to IPv6 and IPsec, which was an add-on for IPv4, is built right into the IPv6 protocol. So we're getting the sense here that, boy, there are a lot of advantages we can take with IPv6 beyond the bigger address space. In fact, we at Netmaster love to recognize the flexibility that many of the IPv6 features are going to bring us. We'll take a look at stateless auto configuration. This is getting your address information, but in a stateless manner. Where DHCP traditionally in the past was stateful, the DHCP server had to maintain information about the client state. In IPv6, we have a much more flexible way to disseminate the needed information in a stateless auto configuration approach. Also, anytime we need to renumber an area, that's going to be built into the IPv6 protocol, and we can even do valid and preferred times for complex but easy to implement renumbering schemes. Interfaces in IPv6 can have multiple addresses assigned to them, and these are not secondary addresses, they're just multiple addresses that you can assign to any interface. Our interior gateway protocols are going to use special addresses that are created by the router on the interfaces, and this is called link local addresses. And these link local addresses that automatically get created are those addresses that are used for interior gateway protocols. For instance, next hop addresses in the IGPs reference the link local address. And that's going to give us a lot of flexibility, as we'll see, especially when we get into the video on demands regarding IGPs and IPv6. Also, when it comes to the addressing, we can utilize provider-dependent or completely provider-independent addressing schemes in our infrastructures. So I hope you've enjoyed this introduction, and I hope this has really gotten you excited for the video on demands that will follow where we will configure many of these features. And please remember that we are going to constantly leverage our knowledge of IPv4 as we master IPv6.